So we are, <clears throat> we are, good morning. We are getting ready to go to Whistler. Um, and it is, time check? 7.48 a.m. 7.48 a.m. Our goal was 8 a.m. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> okay, we have the girls all saddled into their seats, respective seats. They don't look impressive. I don't think they like the camera. <laughs> And I'm gonna get in the truck and we're gonna be on our way. So we'll catch you in Whistler. So this is our uh, view out our back window for the next few days, overlooking the Whistler Valley, I guess you call it. And then there's the other valley up there. Let me take you outside. So everything's intact this time. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing broken. So this is the Whistler RV Park, uh, just north of Brandywine Falls. I believe we're about 15-20 minutes south of Whistler Village. Mm -hmm. And basically, we're all up. Everybody's backing onto this valley. Look, it is gorgeous. Right. Only problem is, fire bans went in effect just a couple days ago. No campfire for Brandon. No campfires, but with this view and the weekend ahead, it's looking good. Yeah. Um, and the graham crackers did break, so s'mores were. Oh, graham crackers. Hmm. Yeah, the graham crackers. Don't. We don't have any chocolate either. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, we have chocolate chips, I think. <laughs> that would be entertaining. Okay, the girls have been enjoying the outdoor fresh mountain air. Hey, Wrigley. Hi, where are we? Oh, Wrigley doesn't like motorcycles. Okay, let's take you over to the edge of this amazing view. Give you a quick view of the valley. All the way out there. It's a little bit hazy and we have a little bit of overcast but the sun is trying hard to come through so um, yeah it's looking great oh Wrigley does not like the motorcycle um, so it's just a little dirt bike going down the road I feel like this is the norm I feel like there's probably a lot of uh, good dirt biking trails and as you can see I'm squinting so yes it is a little bit um, bright out here um, it's warm. Wow. I'm not sure what the temperature is, but it's warm. Anyway, so we will do some lots of filming up here. It's absolutely gorgeous. So um, until next time, that's all.
So we have arrived in Whistler and set up camp and we are now at the ball, ballpark at Spruce Grove and Brent is umping a game in about two and a half hours. So I'm going to take the dogs who've been locked up in the truck, tied on a chain, while well, we got everything sorted and hopefully find an area where I can let this one run free. They've just about torn both of my arms off. <laughs> so er, we're going to go for a walk to the campground that we originally wanted to go to, whether it's a fact that they didn't have room or they just don't accommodate our size of RV. We're going to go find out. We are here walking down towards the, um, not sure the name of the campground, but it's one really close in proximity to the ballpark that we are attending. Um, this is the Fitzsimmons <coughs> Creek. It is glacier fed. And so we're going to carry on down this path, but I'm wanting to find out, can they sustain um, our trailer? Is that the deal? Or were they really truly booked up? <laughs> so we're going to go find out. So the scoop is at Riverside um, RV Park here in Whistler is A and C rows have 50 amp um, sites and they might accommodate our vehicle, our trailer. So they're pulled through sites. They're totally paved. They have a couple of back end sites, but um, I mean, I don't think we would totally fit into that. <laughs> oh, this is a Yorkie trying to attack us. So there's a Denali Dutchman here. I'm not sure the length of it. But uh, he's got two slides on this side. Not sure the length. So, I mean, we would probably be able to put our trailer here. <sighs> yes, I'm tangled up in the dogs again. Um, but I don't know that we would be able to park our truck. Yeah, so some of these sites are very shallow. Um, we probably have to park our truck over in the overflow here. Or we could just park it at the ballpark and leave it there all day. <laughs> leave it there for the whole weekend. So I'm guessing this is B. And this might be C. Let's go have a look. So there's some pretty good sized fifth wheels in here. So I think the key to this park is to ask for a 50 amp site when booking and hopefully our trailer will fit in so there's some pretty good size vehicles here like there's a solitude there fifth wheel so i'm thinking that will fit so that's the kind of site we will fit and there's a big Motor home there. That one looks pretty deep too. So we got some pretty deep sites. Okay, so the possibilities there. We may have to book way in advance. Oh, there's a vehicle from uh, Texas visiting Whistler. It's my favorite game. Let's see where the people are from. Are they from here? Or are they from somewhere way far out? Okay, so row C seems to be a an option. Okay, we're gonna head up onto this trail and uh, get these dogs walking. We're here at the ballpark and Brent is gonna be umping a couple games. One today, one tomorrow. So uh, Saturday night and Sunday morning. So it's one of those things that he couldn't say no. He tried, yeah, no, he kind of tried, <laughs> but he just couldn't say no. They really needed some extra help around here. So um, it's Labor Day long weekend in Whistler. Baseball is the name of the game, and we are going to go check this out. So I'm walking over to the ballpark with the girls, the dogs, Maddie and Wrigley, and we are going to 
see how it goes. I gotta get this out of my right arm because it's killing me. It is really a beautiful park. There's park. There are four baseball diamonds here. And we've been coming up here. Brent, I think, has been, he said the tournament's been going on for about 20 years. So this year is extra special because one of our good friends, Marlene Middlebrook, passed away unexpectedly this past February. And so this is being dedicated to her. So there's teams from Vancouver Island, the Lower Mainland, the Vancouver area. Um, and Brent knows everybody who is anybody in the world of orthodox fastball. So it is a softball tournament, but it is fast pitch. So big difference from this little pitch. It's an adult league. So it's uh, check this out. All right, I see Brent over there in his summer to remember shirt. So let's go over and say hey. Oh, hey girls. Hey, how you doing? Hi. We're back. Yes, you're back. So Brent, what does it feel like to put all the umping gear back on? Feels like work. <laughs> work? That's a job. They're paying you to do this. Uh, yeah. That's why I do it. Yeah, no, you love I'm it. it. for the money. No, you love it. You couldn't say no. No, I couldn't. They totally sucked you in. All they gotta do is say hi. <laughs> what up? No, my stuff's in storage! Yeah, and it took me a whole hour and a half to drive to storage to pick it up, to dig it out. Alright. No, we're For gonna have fun. Bucks a You're gonna have fun with this. Two games. As opposed to traditional ball tournaments, they, you typically flip a coin, and at this tournament they are doing a bocce ball toss. So whoever gets closest to the ball, they get the first um, up to bat. Maddie's a little upset with this whole situation. She doesn't understand why she cannot be out in the, out in the field with Dad. So she needs to settle down and stop whining. And Wrigley's being super good, aren't you, Wrigley? You're being a good dog, aren't you? Being a good dog? You're super tired, are you? Oh, Maddie's just gonna bark at me. So I stand corrected. The team that has got the closest to the target with the bocce ball, they are the ones that are first to outfield. So, just teams are warming up. We have the instigators and we have T something. So, Brent hasn't umped in a while, but he does know a lot of these people. Today we are at the Spruce Grove Ballpark uh, in Whistler and they are doing the playoffs today and this tournament has been going on for uh, roughly uh, I would off the top of my head I'd say 18 to 20 years uh, it's orthodox fast pitch 
uh, which is basically just fast pitch baseball mixed. So there's men and women play. It's highly competitive. Uh, some of the teams that come up here are national caliber. Uh, a lot of the players are national caliber. So it is one of the best tournaments in Western Canada. And I've been an umpire here for roughly a dozen of the last 15 years. So I know it is highly competitive. And there are a lot of good players here, a lot of good teams here. And it's a lot of fun. And as you can hear, Brent was umping this weekend. So um, his voice is a little raspy. A little and... rasp in the voice. I've only done two games this weekend just to fill in a couple of time slots. But uh, it, it takes its toll. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so on some of the video footage I did yesterday, you might hear a couple of Brent's uh, calls. So you would know that uh, yeah, he uses his voice quite well. Uh, my voice has not crackled all day, which is a good thing, but, uh, well, well, time heals all wounds. You're a little worse. It, it's fun. Yeah. Um, so, it's that, well, but the reason we came to this, this ball tournament this year was because they were dedicating it to a friend of ours, and hopefully we can, uh, track down some footage because we were misinformed about the time of that event. There, Yes. And so yes. Uh, it was uh, dedic This tournament has been going for 18, 20 years, roughly. Uh, a few years ago, a friend of everybody's, Grant Whitehurst, uh, passed away unsuspectedly. Or, uh, yeah. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, <laughs> shall we say yes. Uh, he was a young guy, uh, and it was it was a shock to everybody. So this tournament was dedic dedicated to him. And this past February, who uh, we, we lost a sister to our family. Um, she was like an older sister to me. Uh, a mother, older sister, best friend to a lot of people in the tournament. Uh, she passed away as well, Marty Middlebrook. Let me say. So. Uh, so that, that is that is the second dedication for this tournament. So that was the reason we came up here this weekend, um, and Brent ended up umping. They kind of sucked him in. <laughs> he had to go out in storage and find his umping gear. But yeah, I, I haven't umped in over a year, and I came in to do a couple of games just to fill in, which is fine. I, I'm I'm good with that. It was fun. I love the game, so I, I love umping. So I'm getting paid as well as. There you go. All right, well, that's it for this segment, and uh, we're gonna go and check out some of the village and take a walk about there. Ciao for now. Talk to you soon.